The Imitation of Christ by Thomas of Kempis, Book One, Councils on the Spiritual Life, Chapter One, on the Imitation of Christ. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, says our Lord Jesus. In these words, we are counseled to follow the life of Jesus and the way we desire true entitlement and freedom from all blindness of heart is to follow him. Let this life of Jesus then be our first consideration. The teaching of Jesus goes far beyond all the teachings of all the saints. And whoever has his Holy Spirit will discover concealed in that manner spirituality of heaven. Many people, although they often hear the gospel, have little desire to follow the gospel. And it's because they lack the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus. Whoever desires to understand and take delight in the words of Jesus must therefore give himself or give herself wholly to conform his life or her life to that of our master, Jesus. Of what use is it if you understand everything about the Trinity, but you lack humility, and therefore are displeasing to the Trinity? Mighty words don't make you or me just or holy. A good life, however, makes us dear and loved by God. I would personally far rather feel that contrition, that sorrow for sin, than be able to define it in a scholarly sense. If I knew the whole Bible off by heart and all the teachings of the philosophers, yet how would this help me? without the grace that only God gives and the love that God gives the follower of Christ. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the preacher, except to love God and to serve him alone. This is the pinnacle of wisdom, to despise the world, and to daily draw nearer and nearer to God's heavenly kingdom. I tell you, it's vanity to look for worldly honours or to exalt yourself to high station or position in life. It is vanity, total vanity, to be a slave to our natural lusts and desires and to crave those things which will only bring judgment upon ourselves. It is even a vain thing to desire a long life if you care little for living a good and holy life. It's vanity to give thought only to this own life here and to care nothing for that life which is to come. It's vanity to love things that are passing away and not to work toward and to surrender ourselves to that place where the joy is everlasting in God's kingdom. Therefore, keep constantly in our hearts and minds that the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Give yourself, therefore, to take our heart away from the love of those things we see around us and to give our affections to things above, to that invisible realm where Jesus is. Know for sure that those who follow only their natural desires defile their conscience, and they lose the grace of God. Heavenly Father, we commit this reading 
the imitation of Christ to your grace for those who are listening. Amen.